What's poppin'? Brand new drone just dropped in. Hey guys, Dan here from danstube.tv and you can expect brutally honest tech reviews on the channel. Now, I have flown many, many a drones in the past and if you're new to the channel, I focus a lot on drone content but I also have lots of other tech content as well so make sure to subscribe and smash that notification bell. But in today's video, I've got my first impressions of the Mavic Air 2. Now this drone is the newly released drone from DJI. It can shoot 4K 60 frames per second, 1080p 240 frames per second, and it offers many other features that I'll be covering in future videos. So when I initially took off with the Mavic Air 2, it definitely brought a smile to my face. It feels like that authentic DJI experience that I'm sure a lot of pilots out there know. It just takes off perfectly, it handles really well in all wind conditions, and it's just a solid flight experience. So I flew the Mavic Mini a couple of days ago and it was getting blown around a lot. It was definitely struggling in the wind, and then to compare it to the Mavic Air 2, that thing just cuts through the wind. It doesn't even seem to be affected by the wind, and then when it comes to using the DJI Fly app. I've used that app for the Mavic Mini now and it's a decent app, very simplified. There's not really too much to it when you're using the Mavic Mini. So I guess I was a little bit skeptical of how they are going to make it a more advanced experience with the Mavic Air 2, but it's actually really well done. You know, I love how they've got the options off to the right. You just tap on it and you just kind of scroll through the different options. It's all in the one spot. And then if you want to track, you just literally draw on the screen. So you don't have to go to a separate menu and start doing that process. You just draw on a subject and you're ready to go. So it was actually a really simplified process in a very easy to use app, but they also made it more advanced than the Mavic Mini and it definitely gives me more options in terms of customizing the image, the settings, and obviously the features that are available as well. And then when it comes to the photo and video quality, I'll dive into this a lot more in future videos. This was only my first test, so I only really got to test it during sunset. So it was actually quite a low light test. There were points where the sun was completely behind the clouds and this was a good test for the low light capabilities of the Mavic Air 2 and I was really, really impressed with the color science, the dynamic range and the features that are available to me as a pilot. So I used the slow-mo feature of 240 frames per second, 1080p. I also had a chance to use the 48 megapixel still option, which is actually just 12 megapixel photos multiplied. So yeah, that's fine and everything. Um, the photo quality was fantastic though overall. I was really happy with the different options there. You've, you've got just a still option, a smart option, um, and then you've got the 48 megapixel option as well as a few others as well. So quite a comprehensive selection of things to do. Uh, when it came to the 4K video as well, really impressed with that. It looks fantastic. Even in low light, it looked beautiful. I was really happy with the dynamic range and just the overall image. It was just beautiful. I'm still yet to use all of the features, but it was very easy to navigate through the different menus as well, which was something that obviously improves the overall flight experience. Very easy to just draw around a subject and track them. Very easy to change between all of the different modes. And like I said just before, the flight experience was phenomenal. So it really just takes out a lot of that stress of trying to set up the shot and kind of dive into it. It's just very simple to change on the go. Now, I remember when the Mavic Air 2 was released and I originally saw that new controller and I thought to myself, oh, it just looks a little bit cheap. It doesn't look as good as the previous controller. Now, it's funny how a photo can sometimes betray something in a particular way. And then when you actually hold the product, when you actually physically get your hands on it, it's got a completely different vibe. Now. This controller is built extremely well, it's very sturdy, and the initial thing that I didn't like, that kind of slide up phone holder, is actually amazing because it means that I can have my phone in its case, I don't have to take it out of its case, which for a lot of DJI owners, they would know the pain of that. It's so frustrating to have to take your phone out every single time. The other thing that I really love is that the cable is actually tucked underneath that slider. So you unplug it and you tuck it around the back and it just sits there nicely. There's no obstruction, it's not kind of hanging down. It's just tucked behind your phone. So I really love that. I also really love the buttons on the controller and just how it feels in the hand. It's actually really grown on me and I'm extremely impressed with this new change. Another thing that I was a little bit disappointed by when I originally saw the announcement was how they've basically tried to streamline their Mavic range. All their Mavic drones now look the same. You've got the Mini, you've got 
got the Mavic Air 2 and then you've got the Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic 2 Zoom. They all look the same. And that's really good for consumers who just want to kind of go into a store and figure out low, medium and high range Mavics. That's really easy for a salesperson and it streamlines the whole process. But I really did love that elegant, stealthy design of the original Mavic Air. It looked like a luxury sports car and it really did stand out. It's probably one of the most aesthetically pleasing drones I've seen on the market. I really love it. But the Mavic Air 2 just feels very familiar, which is fine, but it doesn't really have any unique character to it. Now for most people they're not going to care about that, um, but for me it was just a little bit of an annoying change for them to kind of try to streamline it and just make it really easy for the lowest common denominator. For the user that wants to go in and just buy a drone, it's either low, medium or high. So that's fine, I'm going to accept that. I am struggling to get my head around the gimbal cover for the Mavic Air 2. They always seem to do this, they change the gimbal cover with basically every new release, which is fine, but this one actually has like a plastic bend that kind of tucks underneath the camera and pushes it forward. It's just a little bit odd to get used to, but it definitely does secure the camera nicely in the gimbal cover. And when it comes to the size of the drone itself, as you can imagine, it sits between the Mavic Mini and the Mavic 2 range. So it is kind of hitting that midpoint. I actually really love the size of the Mavic Air 2. It's sturdy in in your hand, the folding mechanisms feel fantastic, and it is a really nice size. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's definitely struck that really nice balance. That's the end of my first impressions of the Mavic Air 2. I've been very impressed with it so far, so make sure to subscribe and smash that notification bell to keep up to date on my future Mavic Air 2 videos.